Welcome back to Modern Salon TV. I'm TJ Hughes. And I'm Trevor Deneen. Last episode, we went behind the scenes on July's cover shoot with Sheer Genius 3 winner, Brig Van Austin. Got a look at Naha's Texture Finalists. And tour Michelle Obama's former Chicago salon. This episode, Kim Vo gives us a tour of his Las Vegas salon. We get a demonstration of nail marbling. And we get low lighting tips from Naha Lifetime Achievement Award recipient, Beth Minardi. While in Vegas, beauty and fashion director Maggie Mulhern couldn't miss the opportunity to pop into celebrity stylist Kim Vo's luxurious salon. Here's Maggie with a tour. I am with the totally fabulous Kim Vo, who has granted us an exclusive interview in his Las Vegas salon in the Mirage Hotel. But the things I'm most curious about, A, it's Las Vegas, B, it's Sunday, and C, it's nine in the morning. Why are people, why, what's going on here? We're in where the walkways, 20,000 people walk through these doors and see our salon as they walk by to the pool. Now this is what I really enjoy. It's called the wig bar. And this is the wig bar because first of all, it's Vegas. Aren't you ever tired when your clients say, I'm a brunette and I want to go blonde, or I'm a blonde and I want to go brunette, and you cringe because you're like, by the time I'm done and if you don't like it, I'm, I'm finished. This is a way that they can share, they can show their friends, they can look and see what their skin tone is. It inspires also for color. Absolutely. For it's, color it's, it's extensions. Color, it's extensions. Perfect. We also have a makeup, which is amazing, over here, which is our little cove that we get to close up. But it's fun, like up there, if you can see more wigs, we have it. This is my station. Each station is wrapped around with a curtain for a little bit of privacy. Only in Vegas can you have 10 to 12 feet in between each chair. Because I think that, you know, normally in my salon in Beverly Hills, we're crammed in like little sardines. This is my dream wall. It's glass mosaic. When we do photo shoots, this is so much fun. It really reflects, it's such, you know, I think every space has to have a little signature piece. This is our signature piece. This is our hot shade. Look at these fantastic chairs. Look at the marble. And it, it's all connected, but this is, again, a different type of music. And this is all designed this way. Uh, you know what? They come to Vegas, have a great time, and it's so easy to upsell in the sense that they're fantastic because they're already wanting to spend, because it's their vacation. You know, I, a lot of these people are staycations. They really come here, and they, you know, even locals, they want to stay here, and they just want to really be pampered. Ever heard of nail marbling? Neither had senior editor Allison Shipley, now in her 10th month of beauty school at Pivot Point International. But that's changed, and here's Allison with a demonstration of the technique. Hey guys, Allison here with my classmate, Veronica Lacoste. Veronica's pretty much become an expert in nail marbling, but Veronica, not a lot of people know what that is. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about it. Well, first you want to pick out some colors, usually three works best. From lights to darks because it gives it more of a contrast. Then you want to make sure that also all of the nail polishes are unscrewed so it's easier to get to because the nail polish tends to dry fast. Then you want to get a cup of room temperature water and then you take each individual nail polish, drip a drop of the nail polish into the water to the center. They'll expand to a bullseye effect once you keep adding each color into it. Then you can take a toothpick and make any kind of design that you'd like for the nail. When you see the design that you like, the client can then dip their nail into the art at an angle and keep their finger underneath the water. You want for it to sit a little bit so that the nail polish around the surrounding area can dry and then you take a q-tip and clean around the nail. Then the client can then lift their nail from the water and the design will be printed. To remove the nail polish from the skin you want to take a cotton ball or anything that's going to be easy to take with nail polish remover and clean around the general sides and top and bottom of the nail. Then you can go back in with a q-tip and get the more delicate areas closer to the nail polish. And to finish everything off, you use a top coat to get the contrasting colors to pop out. Our signature product is a global keratin hair taming system with Juvexin. It has been optimized specifically for hair. It's non-hydrolyzed or over-processed. The amino acids remain intact, allowing it to really mimic the keratin in your hair, allowing it to bond and protect your hair essentially from the inside out. To find out more, go to our website, globalkeratin.com, or they can call us at 888-Juvexin. At the salon, clients often bring in celebrity pics they want their hair modeled after. Now, celebrity hairstylists around the country give their take on the season's hottest styles and colors, and which celebrities will be wearing them. You don't want to miss this. Take a look. Some major trends going on 
and they're very simplistic too. For instance, redheads are back. Cynthia Nixon's hair gets some gold and sometimes you get some copper. They always have more than one reflect in them. It's that second reflect that's so beautiful to your eye. But when you really think of like who's hot right now, brunette is hot. You look at people like a Kristen Stewart. You look at Kate Beckinsale, Selma Hayek. They all have these warm brunettes. And it's really interesting how brunettes, instead of highlighting, are now going to what people used to not want, <laughs> which is warmth. Well, we're seeing a lot of, you know, celebrity interviews, a lot of natural textures that are being brought out. You know, Scarlett Johansson, even Drew Barrymore now. So you're seeing a lot of curly, wavy hair that we've seen before, but they're kind of almost undone. It's clean, it's very healthy, it just has a little bit of a raw edge to it. It's still very glamorous. One of the hottest trends is short, you know, edgier cuts. What I call the Rihanna look is definitely in. For longer hair, little headbands are in right now. And the whole braid and, and deconstructed, like braided, twisty look is in. The braided styles are on everybody from Sarah Jessica Parker to Kate Hudson, Jada Pinkett Smith. At the recent North American Hairstyling Awards, salon owner Beth Minardi was awarded with Naha's Lifetime Achievement Award for her tremendous contribution to the industry in education, product development, and color expertise. Now we get tips on low light placement from the queen of color herself. Take it away, Beth. Uh, Beth, fill us in on your low lighting technique. I'm in this space taking a slice, a skip, and a slice. Make each low light a different shape or a different size when I'm working through the hair because if God gave somebody highlights from the sun or if a little girl were naturally blonde, the sun would hit and the light would hit the ends more so the hair is naturally a bit deeper at the root. While I'm going to paint this low light all the way roots through ends, you're going to see that the next low light will only be roots to mids or roots to two thirds or roots to a fourth or roots to a third. A mistake people make when they're creating low lights is they put the foil in one on top of the other. You see that I'm zigging and zagging the foil because it creates a more impressionistic effect. Dark, sometimes only to the roots to an inch and a half up like I'm doing here, creates a naturalized effect with lighter ends. So we're creating shape and texture in the hair with color. Highlights should go on the ends. Hair darker at the root is right. Hair when hair is lighter at the root, it's wrong. My next foil is going in at an angle, not directly parallel to that. I'm zigging and zagging my way. I'm working both horizontally and vertically at the same time, working up the head in a diagonal fashion. I always low light hair with demi-permanent color. It holds better. The hair feels better. The chrome color from the Vero K-Pak line in Joico, you're working not only with a wonderful opaque color, but you're also working with something acidic. And we know that dry, burned, overly processed hair does much better better when working with an acidic. In the August issue of Modern, we showcase the hottest men's looks featuring cut, color, and styling product. This upcoming issue showcases Brent Hargrave's Modern Makeover. Let's check it out. Well, first off, I uh, use the principle of less is more. For the highlights, I used our Cream Bleach by Kuhn with 20 volume, and we um, took triangles and worked them around his head shape and made the highlights look a little bit more as if he were at the beach playing volleyball. And then smudged in a darker color in order to create more of an offset look and then took some in. So there's an in and out feeling all the way through alternating diamonds to create more masculinity and strength. With Tony, I used our Kuhn 10.7 in semi-color and used two parts developer with that. Also utilized clear. What that does is just gives me enough violet in there to just counteract any unwanted yellow tones, but still giving it a really sun-kissed effect so what we did is we utilized the technique to undercut right at the hairline so that the curls that were sitting at the top part of his crown at the apex would actually sit down on a very fine line that we removed the weight from. So it makes the guy's jawbones look a lot stronger. It makes his forehead look more sturdy rather than being to where you can see all the way into it. What I used is I used Kuhn's Matte Effect from Kuhn Man Lines that allows the hair to have suppleness but without being too contrived and too set. It's to give it a more raw feeling and a lot more of a beachy look. So this product allows me to have control without the super shininess that you would get from other more feminine geared products. Thanks for tuning in. Didn't get a chance to attend the Naha Awards ceremony? Don't worry, Modern was there and captured the whole event. Get to know the winners by listening to the podcasts at modernsalon.com slash podcast. We'll see you in two weeks. Hi, I'm Ruth Roach, and I gotta go, because I gotta watch Modern Salon TV. Hey, I'm Tommy Bucket, and I'm Sidhu's elite stylist. 
and I'm obsessed with watching Modern Salon TV. Hi, this is Kazimon watching Modern Salon TV.